Hello, my name is Dr. Nish Sonwalkar. Now let's discuss how we can design using the pedagogical uh, cube learning framework. As I described in the pedagogical learning framework, where we have three dimensions or four dimensions of learning, we essentially have the number one dimension, which is multimedia, text, graphics, audio, video, animations, and simulations. The second dimension is uh, cognitive learning models, which I describe as apprentice, incidental, inductive, deductive, and discovery-based learning. Third dimension is interactivity, where you have animation, simulations, discussions, and various kind of interaction with the system itself, where system provides continuous intelligent feedback. And the fourth dimension is social construction, where the students are collaborating through different kinds of Web 2.0 uh, interfaces. In today's time, you can talk about Facebook, you can have uh, Twitter, you can have Flickr. There are a lot of different new technologies which are coming through. And those Web 2.0 technologies essentially provide an interface where you can collaborate. So now let's think about how do we design courses utilizing these four dimensions of learning, which is media models, interactivity, and social construction. As you know, uh, there are various ways to design a course. Uh, the most basic way to design a course is lecture-based model. And in that, uh, professor is in charge. He's a sage on the stage. He comes to the classroom. He prepares his lectures. He delivers it. It's quite a passive experience. There is some discussion uh, during the course. And then there are certain tasks provided and there are certain assessment uh, done where students are asked to write certain exams or certain papers and uh, maybe at the end of the term project. That's uh, apprentice model where professor is the expert and the students are getting instruction from a professor. The second model is case study model, which in recent times, especially in uh, uh, business schools have been prevalently used, where as if you look at uh, most of the real life case studies are discussed and professors will take you through the case study and then start the discussion and student would learn in an incidental learning model where the events in that case becomes very important part of the learning process. An inductive learning process or the classes which where the example is most important where these are research based courses. So you have uh, a directed study or you may have a term paper based uh, course where at the end of uh, the term, you have to write a research paper where you are going to collect a lot of data and using your inductive logic, you will come to certain conclusions about their subject matter. So those are term paper based courses where at the end of the term, the learning outcome uh, on a certain subject matter, a term paper or uh, is, is the main objective of the course. The fourth one is project based course. In most of the engineering schools now, there is a trend that uh, they want to create projects where students would build certain uh, kinds of uh, uh, devices and then they will compete with each other uh, to see who has built the best device. And those are project-based course. Or you could also have a project-based course in social studies where it's mostly based on running some field studies, collecting the data, understanding the trends and deducing some of the principle which are observed as a result of uh, that study. So those are called uh, deductive courses uh, or these are project based courses. Finally, you could also have experimental courses where essentially you run certain experiments, collect the data and then you find out by analyzing the data collected during the experiment how the learning principle is evolving out of that experimental data. So if you look at uh, the five different ways of running a class, which is lecture based, case study based, uh, uh, research paper based, project based, or experiment based, they are essentially coming very close to what we described in the five different learning strategies of apprentice, incidental, inductive, deductive, and discovery. 
Now comes the technology part. So now we want to design a course, let's say, to enhance uh, a lecture-based course, what kind of technology would we need? If we want to create a case study-based course, what kind of content and technology or simulations uh, we require in order to run the case study model? Then similarly, we can come up with a taxonomy of different technologies which are applicable for each type of the course. And at the end of each one of these different types of uh, designing that course, once we decide that we want to create a project-based course, now we know what course uh, structure hierarchy we need. We also know what CMS course management tools we need. And we also then incorporate some of the enhancement which the new pedagogical and technological tools can provide to create a, let's say, incidental course, inductive course, or deductive course. So I think once you define the objective of the course, the understanding of the end user, and then you can also put together a uh, course enhancement technologies, now you have a very good instructionally and pedagogically strong design.